Orleans is a great framework for building distributed systems types applications. In this video, we're going to see how we could deploy an Orleans application over into Kubernetes. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the On.Net Show. My name is Cecil Phillip, and in this episode, we're going to learn how we can deploy Orleans applications to Kubernetes. And I have Ruben here from the Orleans team who's going to talk to us about it. So Ruben, how are you doing, man? Hey, Cecil, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Pretty good, man. It feels like it's been just like a few moments ago since we spoke the <laughs> last time about Orleans yeah. in general, and you showed us some really cool examples of some of the things Orleans can do within the context of an ASP.NET application. So mm -hmm. today, I know you're going to talk to us about the deployment side of it, right? So now we're going to take the app that we've already built, or we're going to put it in an environment like Kubernetes, which is really good for building microservice distributed system type applications, right? Exactly. So we'll show just how little needs to change when you take an existing application that you're doing development on uh, in order to be able to deploy that to multiple nodes up in Kubernetes. Cool, cool, cool. So do you have like, 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 where do you want to start? Do you have a demo you want to look at first? Do you, sure. Like, what do you want to Let's do? have a look at the app we're doing, we're, we're deploying. So last time we showed this, this app, we didn't actually show it off, but we had this idea of this Chinese English dictionary. And I said that you could run it locally. And essentially, this is what it looks like. So you type in a word, let's say, hello, in this case, and it will come up with some definitions or goodbye. Um, thank you. Uh, and in this case, we've implemented request rate limiting. And, and that's another thing you can look at in the source code to see how that was implemented. It's nice and simple. Um, and hopefully it demonstrates just a couple of application patterns that are relatively easy to get started with, but also are relatively suitable for production use. Nice. So that's the application. Uh, now let's have a look quickly at what exactly we want to do today. So that application is running in development, and we've modified it so that it can run in Kubernetes. And the first thing that we want to look at is what do we change in our main program when we're configuring the application in order to make it actually suitable for Kubernetes? And then we're going to have to provision a Kubernetes cluster, uh, package the application uh, using Docker. Then we're going to define the resources for the application, so that's definitions of uh, deployments, uh, load balancer, some services, and other Kubernetes primitives. And then finally, we'll deploy it. So let's jump straight in and have a look at Visual Studio. So last time we talked, we had a few lines pretty similar to this, just to show what it looks like when you want to deploy an Orleans application locally. So we had localhost clustering. And last time, we had Azure uh, grain storage using the de development emulator. This time I've just said, let's change that. We can use Orleans for that and just use in-memory storage. We don't need to start up the emulator if we don't want to. So what changes when we go to Kubernetes is we're going to say, all right, well, the .NET generic host has this notion of a, de of a hosting environment. And we're going to say that if we're running in Visual Studio and we're using the development environment, we'll use this local host stuff. But otherwise, in, in production or staging, we come down to here. And so this is where we've added the new code that we're looking at today that allows it to run nicely in Kubernetes. And I noticed there on line 20, you have that use Kubernetes hosting. I'm guessing uh -huh. that's that's almost like use Kubernetes configuration. Like it's going to look for Kubernetes specific settings and, and those types of things in your environment. Exactly. So what it will do is when the process starts up, it'll look and see the environment variables, and then it will ask the Kubernetes server or the Kubernetes uh, API server, what are the other pods around in the cluster? And so we can use that to integrate more deeply with Kubernetes itself. Yeah. It makes a lot of things much easier. And we'll look a little bit at the environment variables that actually need to be defined to get that uh, working. But then the next thing is we're going to use Redis for clustering as well as persistence. So last time we had this persistence using in-memory grain storage or in Azure grain storage, 
And this time we've just changed the plugin to say, let's use Redis for the same thing. And so we're going to also pull the Redis connection string straight out of environment variables. And those environment variables will be defined on our pods. Cool, 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 cool. And so, like you said, you're using the same Redis instance, I'm guessing, or the Redis that exists within that Kubernetes environment. And you're using it mm -hmm. for multiple things, like the clustering and also the storage. Yeah, that's right. So we can, we can use it for uh, multiple different types of storage if we want, as well as clustering. And there are plugins for other things in there as well. And it's very easy to write your own plugins too. So right, these right. are all of the changes that need to happen in, inside of our program to get it suitable for Kubernetes. So in terms of the rest of the app, nothing else changes, right? The way that I actually build my grains, right? The types of work that my grain does, none of that changes. Only what we're doing here in terms of how the app boots up for the silo builder changes, because now we want it to be in a different environment. Exactly. So the same programming model means that you can just deploy either locally in a single process or scale out to very many processes without any code changes, just configuration changes like here. So let's go back to our plan and look at the next thing we have to do. So the next thing we need to do is actually create a cluster for us to use. Of course, that takes a little while. So if we look at what's actually involved, I've prepared a cluster earlier that we're going to use, but this is the basic kind of procedure. And this will all be online in the GitHub repo. So you don't really need to worry about following exactly what's going on here. But the general gist of it is that we use the Azure CLI to go and create uh, first a resource group and then an AKS cluster. And then we install the Kubernetes command line utilities if we don't already have them. But then we need to configure Kubernetes um, in order to be able to use a Azure Container Registry. And so we create an ACR account, and we're going to use that to push our Docker images that we're going to create. And then we use this rather complicated looking set of incantations here that goes and creates a service principle, which is an, an object in Azure Active Directory that Kubernetes can use to authenticate with that uh, ACR instance. And then we tell Kubernetes about it. And so our application later will be able to use this Docker registry in order to be able to pull down the application. And then when we think about service principles, for folks that might not necessarily have things in the cloud, essentially you're just creating a, a, a an account in AD that's not a real person, but we just use it to assign you know, application credentials to. That's exactly right. Yes, precisely that. So it's like a machine account, you can think of it. Right. So. Now, we've already got our Kubernetes cluster provisioned. The next thing that we would need to do is go and de define the Docker file. And so in this case, the Docker file is actually just a very standard default Docker file that you would get straight out of Visual Studio. In fact, I think this one was generated by Visual Studio. You can see the comment up the top here. And nothing here needs to change. So when you tell Visual Studio to Dockerize your app, it'll go and generate this file and all it really does is build the application using this little build container and then copies it into a app container and it'll execute .NET with the application's DLL name. So thankfully, that's very easy. Now, once you've done that, we're going to need to go and provision, sorry, we're going to need to go and deploy the application. And that's a couple of steps in this. So we'll first go and have a look at what that looks like. We need to log into the ACR container registry, just like we did before when we created it. Usually this wouldn't be in, uh, involved, but you know if it's been a little while since you've pushed a, a container image, then you might need to log in again. But once we've done that, we're going to build the front end part of our app using NPM. So then we need to tell Docker to build our container using that uh, Azure Container Registry server that we found up here and push it to Docker and then tell Kubernetes to go and deploy this deployment YAML. So it's going to be a set of Kubernetes resources defined in here. We'll look at those in a moment. And then finally tell Kubernetes to go and restart the deployment that we've made. And the reason you need this last line is because if you've made a change to your container image, but you haven't actually changed the deployment, then you need to tell Kubernetes to go and refresh that image. So
So let's go now and have a look at that YAML file. So this is kind of the media one out of all of these. And so I'm guessing this YAML file is going to have a Kubernetes-specific definitions, mm -hmm. right? So totally. like we're looking here, like there's deployments. I'm guessing there's going to be services and pod definitions and those types of things in here. Exactly. So the first thing we're going to need is a Redis deployment. And this is straight out of Microsoft Docs online on how to deploy Redis. So in this case, we're just deploying a single instance Redis container um, from the Microsoft Container Registry. Then we're going to create a service for it. And the reason that we do this is so that our other application, this Handlebar app down here, it needs a way to be able to find it. And so it's going to use this service record in order to be able to find it using DNS. And so the more important one and the more complicated one is how our application looks. Now, I mentioned that we're using this Orleans Kubernetes hosting package. And what that does is it reads a couple of labels off of your application. So any Orleans application has a service ID and a cluster ID. Uh, and, and they basically uniquely identify an application um, or an instance of a cluster. There's a little bit more explanation on what that is here. But for the time being, just know that you can always keep them both the same static thing when you're deploying in Kubernetes. So from a so let's say I'm a, a .NET developer, an ASP.NET developer. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of looking at those as like it's just metadata, pretty much. It's metadata it's, I put exactly. into that section, and and um, Orleans knows how to pull that metadata out. Exactly. And the next thing is we're going to need some ports to listen on. So Orleans typically uses two ports, one for silo to silo or server to server communication, and one for external communication. So you can just give them those two ports there. And Orleans knows that these are the defaults, so it'll go and pick them up. And likewise with ASP.NET, the default ports for HCP and HCPS. So we define them. Then we need to tell, we need to plumb in some environment variables. So we're using Kubernetes uh, YAML file uh, metadata ref here to basically say that label that we saw above for a service ID and cluster ID, I want to go and pipe those into environment variables. And similarly, we, we take some metadata for the pod namespace and name. This kind of stuff is copy paste from, from the documentation. So you don't need to worry too much about this, but just know that it needs to be there. Got and it. finally, we need to tell our application, hey, when you're looking for Redis, the particular Redis instance you're looking for is called Redis as well. And because you and, only have one instance of it, it should just be able to use that. But I'm guessing if it had more than one instance too, Kubernetes by itself would scale them. And so we could still just use that one service name. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly how Redis deals with scale out, but hopefully they would have a kind of a gateway that will allow you to contact any one of those nodes via DNS Got it. Uh, and, th and then get routed to others. Uh, that's essentially how Orleans does it when you scale out. It doesn't matter which node you contact, it'll always help route you out to another one. Okay. Now, after that, we just needed to find a way that the internet can go and contact our HTTP server. So we create a new service with a load balancer type, and this will allow Azure Kubernetes service to go and expose this to the internet and it'll give us an external IP. And so this bit's very important. Finally, because all clusters are secure and RBAC enabled by default in AKS now, you need to tell it that we're going to need some role binding in order for the Orleans Kubernetes integration to be able to do its job. And so given all of that for granted, we can go and deploy our application. So if we go and run that deployment script that we saw before, that's going to go and use nodes to go and build that site. And then it's going to use, first it's got to log in, then it's going to use Docker to build a container, push it to uh, Azure Container Registry, and then use Kubernetes uh, kubectl or kubectl to apply that YAML file that we just saw a moment ago. And this looks like this is going by pretty quick, particularly to Node. I was expecting a Node build to take a lot longer than it actually did. Yeah, that Node build is surprisingly fast. I think maybe because it's a simple site, but it's pleasantly quick, I think. Got it. it takes a little bit longer to build the application. Got it. But then when, like you said, when this is done, then we should be able to use kubectl and kubectl 
and do like get pods or get services mm -hmm. and see the application running inside of Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. And so it has to push up the now the final layer. So it's already got different layers that represent things like dot dot runtime, et cetera. And then the final layer is a little bit big because it actually includes that that Chinese dictionary database, which itself is about 80 megabytes, I think. Right. Anyhow, so so now that's up in Kubernetes. And, and we can go and ask kubectl get pods, and we can go and see it's creating, it's created Redis, Redis is running, and it's created a bunch of containers for our application. And now they're all running too. And so the next thing is we, we need a way to go and actually see it on the internet. So if we ask kubectl to get us the um, service that we defined earlier, it's got an external IP. So this is an internet exposed IP. And so if I just launch a web browser to that IP, then I can bring it over and let's make that a little bit bigger, too big. And we can, again, type start typing in words. You know, it, it primes the dictionary first, but then after the first call, it's, oops, after the first call, you can see it's very fast because everything is cached inside of the grain. And again, we got rate limited because we tried too many times, but after that, again, very quick. And so that's it. That's all you need to do to deploy an Orleans application to Kubernetes. And it's already scaled out, as you can see, to three nodes here or four nodes even. And so it's resilient. We could go and delete one of these pods and everything would keep working. Nice. Now, one of the things that I, I noticed that I kind of wanted to highlight was the fact that how quick it took to get to Kubernetes, right? So like mm -hmm. outside of the .NET build, outside of the, the Node build, and outside of actually creating the containers, like once your app is packaged, running those scripts seem to just probably take like a few seconds, which I was surprised of because for me as someone that's, you know, I've made, a, I've made it a point to learn Kubernetes in 2021. And so being able to see how these things quickly get up there and how fast you can actually start running microservice distributed systems type applications in Kubernetes is really interesting. Yeah, exactly. And it can be a little bit daunting at first when you're presented with like big opaque looking blobs of YAML and, and all these tooling yeah. and things you need to learn. But I think that having a starter application like this, it just says, look, here's some relatively decent practices that'll get you kickstarted. And then now you can go from there. You're already productive and then you can develop further from there. I, I think that's hopefully helpful. Yeah, that's great. And what we'll do, we'll make sure that we have links in the show notes that include mm -hmm. samples. And I believe your site is also available as, a, as an app that folks can download on their phones. So we'll make sure we share oh, with right. folks so they could look at the code, they could try deploying it themselves, and they could see what it's like to build Orleans applications mm -hmm. and deploy them to, to Kubernetes. I should also point out that all of this is up on GitHub. Um, you can see the GitHub page here. So it's under my profile at Ruben Bond forward slash handbell bow dash web. Um, so you can go up there, check the code. I've tried to comment it to, to make it look approachable and understandable. And it also has the guide for how you can deploy that to Kubernetes and everything you need to type in and do. So great, man. Well, hey, Ruben, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Um, Again, this, has been, this has been very insightful for me to see for sure. And I'm definitely going to check it out. And thank all of you for watching. This has been another episode of the On That Net Show where we learn how to deploy Orleans applications to Kubernetes.